Hello and welcome to the Miniatures of Pocket Area Mastodon build video. Wow, that was a mouthful. So this video was requested by a number of people via social media and I'm more than happy to oblige. So without further ado, I guess, let's get started. So as always, what you want to do with your forge world pieces, particularly the larger ones, um, look warm water, a little bit of soap, and just give them a good clean. So I've got everything set up. I've got, you want to be cleaning it like on uh, as the way through, so like these big chunky pieces. You'll probably need one of these. You'll need a handsaw for definite. Your clippers, your knife, probably even some files as well. But you want to make sure you can make a clean so that when you come to painting it, the paint sticks. Now this is common knowledge for nearly all of us at this point. Um, I've done it. I've, I've done it where I've, I've like bought forge world pieces before and um, I just built them, just put them together and painted them and not had a problem with the paint sticking. However, and although it's been a while since I've built any large pieces um, from Forge World, I, I still would say like your larger pieces, you, you definitely need to give them a clean. Give your smaller pieces a clean as well, but if you don't, it's not as bad. But you can generally start to see where the water is um, pooling or where it's kind of acting like an like really oily. Um, and it's just a case of getting off all this this excess of the resin dust and dust in general to be honest. Uh, if you've had a piece sat around for a while, maybe not in its box or not in a bag, yeah I'd suggest giving it a good clean. Uh, however, this thing is huge. I've been really looking forward to doing this since it was first like announced. I saw it and I was like, I want one. <laughs> out of all the big, out of all the big models, it was always been a case of I want one. Never really been a big fan of Titans, but this thing, oh mama. So, because it's so damn big, what we are going to do is I think it's time for a time lapse, don't you? Because. Otherwise, this is going to take this is one long video. I think this is going to be a multi-part video, which is a given, I think. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get a time lapse going, and we'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> so obviously right now we have the interior part um, so that's what I'm focusing on at the moment because I'm really like not used to doing interiors like I put interiors apart on tanks before now and then just ignored them sealed the doors up and forget about it but because this is such a large piece and there's so much there's so much detail on the inside Little lockers, consoles, you know, even like the the door mechanisms. There's so much detail on the inside that I, I really want to get everything. So I'm going to try and do go through this in, in a detailed way as best I can. Um, looking at some of the parts when they go together, uh, I can see there might be a couple of little issues, which like that's going to slow me down. Um, but there's still I've missed some lines so there might be a, a little bit of knife work tweaking as we go along um, but I'm not I'm not really bothered about that it doesn't worry me it's 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 still an intimidating piece um, but yeah let's get gluing I'm really looking forward to this um, I just I've got to make sure I've got the doors the right way around I think that's the right way around. And you can tell which are the right way, which are the right way, and which is the wrong way. 
because um, the right way the door will open on it full hinge and the wrong way, I'm not going to do it because I nearly cracked some, some of the resin already but the wrong way it sort of goes like that and then doesn't open anymore so always if you're new to like Forge World pieces working with big chunks of resin um, always check where everything is supposed to go before you actually glue it in place. Now obviously the doors we want to open so they're not going to be glued uh, and when it comes to priming the mini, what we were going to be, we're going to be very, 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 very careful with it um, because we don't want the primer, we don't want what we're going to be priming it with to harden and then when we open the door the first time it's going to crack. But there are ways around that. It's called being careful. <laughs> that's my, that's my technique, just be careful. So, this here is going to disappear right now uh, and we're going to focus on just like getting this built um, depending on how long it takes there might be another time lapse coming soon but otherwise I'm just going to go through this as detailed as I possibly can so what do we need first well we need these mm, melter barrels yeah they are melter barrels so there's no particular should be six there's no particular size they came staggered. Now, I've probably made a massive mistake here. There's, there is probably a specific way that they go on the door. If there is, and you've built one of these before, please comment below um, and laugh at me as much as you want. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to muddle my way through and hope that I get in the right way around. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just going to double check actually, like, doesn't look to be any like size comparison, like difference wise, let's just line these up, no they don't look like there's a difference in size. Uh, another thing to always remember is make sure that when you've finished cleaning everything that it's dry. Old flannels come in real handy at this point. Oop. They don't worry about doing that that much anymore. Yeah, it doesn't look to be. I love the fact that this thing has like melter guns sticking out the door and frag launchers. Oh, that looks so good. Right, let's get these glued in place. That's the first job. And then we want to be putting up the paint, putting the pistons together, and then so I'm using Gorilla Glue. Uh, every time I've done like a big resin piece, I, I sometimes get impatient, as I know many of you out there do. Uh, I personally would suggest Gorilla Glue because it hardens, it dries fast, and it hardens. Um, but that's just my personal preference. Uh, as we get through to like putting the whole piece together, we will also be using elastic bands. I went out and picked up like two large packs of elastic bands. So that should be enough. Just make sure you've got the hole on the outside, not the uh, bit that connects. There we go. All right, there's two. Just want to make sure that they're in there straight. There you go, there's the melters on the one door. Which door is that? Is that the right door? I think that's the right door. Double check. Yeah, that is the right door. I think. Yeah, it's the right door. Literally, it's the right door, and it's also the right door. Um, <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna move that piston. We're gonna put that to one side. Um, we're gonna do the left door, not the right door, the left door. I apologise that the, the the camera's autofocus is having a bit of a, a struggle focusing on all of this stuff all at the same time. So I do apologise. Um, so yeah, let's get these in, and then. We'll start working on some of the other pieces. So, I want, like I said, I want to do, make this as detailed video as possible. 
um, people did ask uh, asked to see a build video. So I want to make sure that I cover everything as best I can. Um, just for anyone out there that's that's deciding that they want to build one of these absolute beasts. Uh, when I first saw this come, when I first saw it announced, I was just like, "Oh, that's that's the tank I want. That's the super heavy I want to get." Um, just the concept of it, the idea of it. You know, it's like, "Oh, you you've got a fortress wall. Great. Let me just don't mind me while I just punch a hole through it and form a tunnel and um, so my men can just constantly filter through into your fortifications." Yeah, we'll have one of them. Um, I've seen, I've only ever seen one of these once used in a game, and my days, it was just, it was so funny to watch. This great big hulking thing just. Oh, why won't you go in? See, this is why we should all, you always check. See, that's a bit stiff, is that? Ah, see, here we go. Are they the right way around or are they the wrong way around? I think it might just be, you know, that there's not enough of the piston cut off. Maybe I haven't. Yeah, I might have to cut some more of that piston off so it slots in because it should go. You can see it's not going in. That's as far as it will go. But then if you look at on this side, oh, throw pieces around the place, it slots all the way. Now I'm assuming there's probably going to be like a little bit of a gap with that showing, but that's fine. Um, if I put this one on now, you'll see what I mean by it. that's clearly not the right place. And this side's more flat, whereas that's more rounded. So clearly, clearly they're the right way around. And I'm quite, I'm feeling quite lucky actually, because these look relatively straight as well. We do have the heat gun out, so if there's any loud music comes on, and you see this blue nozzle just appear out of nowhere. It's the heat gun, which I'm really happy that people told me to get my hand, get hold of, um, especially for something this size. Uh, I, I Mrs. Apothecary turned around and went, "Oh, I think we've got one of them." Uh, so I ran downstairs and found one in her. Uh, found one in the. Okay, we're just going to cut a little bit of this off. Since comparison, see, it looks like it's the same size, so it might just be. Is there something in that hole? Okay. Well, we're not putting it on yet. We're not putting the door on yet. So what we'll do is we're just going to put the doors to one side for the moment, and we're going to focus on. Oh, I'm going to focus on getting the rest of it sorted out. Uh, pistons, right? Two for either side. Don't really think that there is a, any particular way that these need to uh, go on. Like there's two for the left or two for the right. They're just you know the pistons. Um, Ooh. And some of the glue just gone away, straight away. My clumsy fingers. Right. Very thin. Ooh. Yeah, so lining them up is going to be. You want to make sure that they they get lined up. That's the only the only thing about gorilla gorilla glue that I I don't like. Well, I do like and I don't like at the same time. Gorilla Glue tends to um, harden really fast, uh, which is great, but at the same time, it's a bit of a nightmare because if something's not not lined up properly and it hardens, you're like, oh no, right, okay. Uh, so yeah, but you know, they, they look like this. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going together all right. They'll be fine. Iced, they'll be fine. Promise. Right, okay, so let's 
get some more of these pistons done. See, there you go. So that didn't line up straight away, but that was already sticking. And that was within a couple of seconds. That was in like a second. It's like, oh, you've touched. Ah, must dry, must stick. I just want to take. I want to. I definitely want to take it like nice and slow, especially when it comes to like the priming, because I don't want the glue, at the the paintwork to. Uh, um, see, that's what I mean, like there. So there's going to be a couple. I think there's going to be a couple of little bits where things just need leveling off, and you can generally just take your Exacto knife or um, file or something, and just make sure that it's flat. Uh, Particularly if you've got a new blade on as well. If you've got an old blade, change your blade beforehand. Because uh, you generally find that over time cutting will put like little dints in your blade. Like you'd expect to see, you know. Um, so what ends up happening is you get these little dints and then you go to do that and you scrape away the, the excess that you want to get rid of and it leaves these little ridges which you don't see. You know, you, you can look at them, and unless you get them like really close, you don't actually see them. So just be careful with that. Make sure you always you always use a new blade as well when you're doing these these bigger pieces. That one, that one went to bed. Oh, perfect! At least one, one thing I love about this this hobby: when something goes together perfect the first time, you're like, ah, oh, yes, glorious, oh, heavenly. And then last one. And then what's next on this? Then we're adding like. Uh, lower right hinge, upper right hinge, okay, so then we're adding the hinges and lighting, I think it looks like, lighting, yeah. I want to make sure that these pistons are fully dried as well, because I'm not sure. So, we've got the hinges in a hole lights and stuff like that and then it moves to straight away to the pistons and stuff so that's going to be that's cool and obviously we don't want it to be glowing them because the door's going to be attached oh, sorry apologies for that noise <laughs> so yeah so we've got hinges sorted right then we've got top and bottom hinges. So we're gonna do the right panel first. Just gotta make sure that's pretty self-explanatory. There's a good size gap, which I'm assuming is where... See, I'm doing most of this blind. I've, I've, I've only looked at the instructions once. So this could be interesting. So we want the right hinges. Yep, that looks right. You want enough glue to get in the edges, but not too much that it's just going to sit there and wobble around. Make sure it's sturdy. Hold it in place for a bit. As long as you hold it in place with like one hand while you're doing the other bit, it should be okay. Right, so this is the other thing when I said about like make sure your, you check where every bit goes because you can see the slope on that. The slope on, obviously it's the alternate side. If you try and put that on there, you've got this bit that sticks up, which is, that's in the wrong place. So it sort of, that's not flush. So make sure you always check where your parts are going before you add them to the, uh, to the model. I have done that, I've done that previously with Gorilla Glue. Uh, I actually used it with a, um, I didn't have any Gorilla Glue to hand one year. 
I think it was the year I put the Typhon together and I used contact adhesive I put part in the wrong place <sighs> you can imagine uh, you can imagine my frustration at that one uh, so yeah once they're in place once they're stuck I say you don't need to move it so what we'll do is just move some pieces around they're the in interior parts of the pistons so we'll just move things to one side uh, okay let's have a look shall we build 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 so we need one of these which is a internal support and then we need the double lighting I mean this is what I mean like I've never done the interior of a vehicle before so this is this is a lot of fun like I'm really looking forward to painting all the interior parts um, yeah it looks cool in there. And then what we'll do is we'll put this to one side, let it set. Um, and then once it's set, we'll, uh, we'll we'll sort out the the floor because there's a hole that the, the, the them floor panels are. I think there's three. They come in three pieces to the the floor panels. Make sure your glue doesn't go everywhere. You don't want that. You don't want to be like putting a piece down and it's sticking somewhere. That's not going to be helpful. Go here and make sure that that's lined up straight because that's another thing. The, the another thing that I struggled with with tanks in the past has been. Um, Things not been lined up, and then when you you end up slotting parts into place uh, on the inside of a vehicle, they shift or move, and and at the, the wrong angle. So when you end up putting it together, you've kind of it's slightly slanted. But so far, that's the right panel. That's the inside. That's done. So we'll put that away there. I'm going to do the same again. This time, though, on the left inner panel. You've got the left and you've got the right hinge. Obviously, you've got the left hinge. Again, try and make sure it's flush because when that centre, when that collar, when that um, floor panel goes in, it's uh, that's going to be a bit of a nightmare if that's wrong. And then we want. Top panel. Make sure it's flush. And then, what do we need on this side? So on the left, on the left, we only have one lot of lighting. And like I said, I love the look of these, like the lights and the interiors. Really cool. I always thought that there was seating in, in the Mastodon for some reason and I think it's because it does look very similar to like the interior of a rhino a little bit particularly sort of this section at the back um, and I was like oh seating looks a, bit like a, looks a bit like a rhino it's not well it is it's, the, it's a rhino's bigger daddy bigger brother I guess Oh, there's a little keypad there as well on the on the ladders. Oh, that's really cool. See, this is what I mean. These little these little bits here and there. I'm really looking forward to to picking all the really, all this detail out. It's going to be really cool. I think the interior of this in the interior of the Mastodon is going to be probably a bit more colourful. Uh, I'm going to use like some bluey greys. Uh, maybe some greens. The floor, as you can imagine, is going to be filthy uh, and covered in a variety of different colours. So, probably brown, use some typhus corrosion, 
um, maybe some greens uh, and a lot of greys really because this is going to be an Iron Warriors Mastodon at the end of the day so we'll, we can imagine like they don't keep the inside of this thing very clean so there is two panels sorted, done and dusted to a degree so the next thing to do is going to be the floor panels. We're going to do, yeah, which we need to, we still need to cut, clean. Once they're cut and clean, we're going to get them stuck on. Hopefully, fingers crossed, everything, to my eye sight, everything is straight. The panel, the big panels are straight. Even these big hulking outer panels, which we obviously come later, um, they appear to be straight from what I can see. Uh, I know there's some curvature uh, in the model itself because just the way it goes together and the way it was designed and the way it looks. So hopefully the curves I can see are just part of the model. But we'll soon find out. Otherwise, yeah, I'm gonna have to use the heat gun, which is no big deal. It just means you get to listen to a bit more of Reva Sykes's awesome music, basically. So, well there's time lapse I think. So my mistake, it's not the floor panels, um, it's actually the rest of the components for the door. So the pistons um, and the connection parts. It took me a moment to, to look at the instructions and realise that I yeah, kind of done it wrong. So yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to start working on each panel's, uh, well, piston parts and doors so we need to put the doors on on each part we did have to cut down the bar on the the left panel but not too much so it shouldn't be an issue one of the one of the funny things I find I've come across this a lot recently it's a lot of the uh, a lot of parts where you just gotta slide it in and it just clicks in like that but they're not they're not like and I've never pinned anything they don't they don't sit in and, and they don't sit there so I'm kind of worried that like it's gonna slip out because they just they just slides around like that um, but hopefully I shouldn't have to like go away and, and learn how to pin I probably it's probably something I probably should learn how to do really pin pinning things and I do have uh, I do have a drill around and I do have some some bar uh, that I could use but yeah these these bits just sort of slot in like that you've got to get them the right way around as well. well sort of the right way around I say get them the right way around because the instructions show flat apart goes to the back. So I'll just turn that around so I remember. Because <laughs> otherwise, most of you who have been watching these videos know me by now, I will forget and put it on the wrong way. And then we'll do these two as well. So because I'm going to be painting this. Um, I'm painting the interior, and it's one of the reasons. It's, gonna, it's one of the reasons why this video is going to be uh, split up into multiple parts. Um, because I do want to paint the inside. I've never, I've never painted the interior of a vehicle before now, so we will be sort of building this in parts and then painting it. I want to paint the inside because the inside's just. Full of so much detail. Oop, go in there, and that goes. So I made sure that all these pieces fit into place beforehand uh, after I cleaned them. So I just best way to do it really is if you hold the piston, 
put a bit of glue in, make sure it's all down to the bottom and then slot, Ooh. say that, my fingers apparently don't want to work. And slot that in. Have we not the right way? Oh, see, now oh, we're having problems. Hmm. Huh. Ah, oh, that's not right. Why is that not right? It should slope. Hmm. Have I got the wrong part? I bet I've got the wrong, I have got the wrong part, I've put the, this part, I've put it in <laughs> the wrong side. There you go. Paint's still, the, the glue's still wet, so it's not stuck, so we need to be quick and get this side in. Yeah. I'm going to put a little bit more, oop, put a little bit more glue in that side. Slot it in at an angle, put the piston in, close, hold, and stick that up like that. Right. And while there's still some glue on the end of the nozzle, just add some in there. At an angle, pop the piston in, and squeeze. I think I'm probably going to do some filling, like there's going to be parts where I'm going to have to do some filling, but that's not going to be that much of a problem. Right, and then... These go in there like that, so... If we take these off, take the door off, place a bit of room in there. Stick these on. Ah, oh, so that's why it's the flat side. Ha! <laughs> I tried putting them on the other way. So because they're so, the piston's so loose, this might be a better way of doing it. In the instructions it says to click them in, glue them on, and then try and get it to uh, piece together, but what I think might be an easier way to do it is Aha! There we go! Hey! Look at that! That looks cool! So that might be an easier way so the instructions, as you can see, show clicking that in place and then uh, sticking it on and attaching it in place. So the, an easier way of doing it might actually be, because they are so loose, might actually be to um, put each of the parts in place and then attach that way. And now there is these little top pieces as well which are supposed to go on here glue into place but not glue the uh, the door. So of course you would suggest being really careful with that. There is a slight slant to it as well, so it's making sure that you've got the right one. Because as we know, these these uh, these kits are not numbered. That falling over, falling off the table. So that looks like yeah, that looks like the right one. Just double check by putting the other one in place. Yeah, so they look. These look about right. So you only want like a dab of glue. And I would suggest as well like putting the glue top edge, the very top edge. Um, just let it 
lift away a little bit and then place it. You can always use your finger. Yes, okay, it's super glue and it will stick to your finger and make your finger a bit sticky, but this is Gorilla Glue as well, so it only does it for a few seconds. And with that in place, that is one half. The door just opens and closes quite nicely. Now, how this is going to work once we've primed it, we won't know until it happens, but Oh look, there you go. So it pops straight out. Probably once you've got ooh, your first coat of paint on this as well, that will prevent the piston from falling out. I might have to just stand this up as well. And once the door's on, will it stand? That's the thing. Ah, there we go. So once the door's on as well, it will stand up to an extent. So while that one's drying, we'll work on this door. And then, because obviously it's getting built so I can paint the inside, um, will be putting the panel on and then uh, what was I going to say then? <laughs> I must have lost my train of thought yeah so we'll get this door done get the floor panels in have a quick look what comes next uh, and then I think we'll be we'll probably be doing like another part building some other pieces um, at a later date while the interior of this behemoth is getting uh, painted basically right, so pull out the piston slot that in place there slot that in place there I'll just push that to stand it up so just a bit of glue at the f furthest away from where it's supposed to uh, be moving and stick it in place and wipe off the excess with your finger, use a different finger to just squeeze and there we go so that is two halves of the interior halves of the Mastodon. Hmm. They are some big dolls. They look really cool. Right. So, they do stand up on their own once the door is on. I'd suggest every now and again you keep going back and um, just move the door. So that's the door section done. So, the next thing to do is, for the interior anyway, is these floor panels and the door. So what we'll do is we'll probably we'll sort these panels out, um, cut them off the sprue, uh, cut them off the, the excess and clean them up. And we'll probably just, yeah, we'll probably use the left side hole, keep the right side separate, keep the door separate, we'll paint that separately as well and then before it's going to be a lot of separate parts from this point on because uh, the other interior parts are these now it does say remove shims as indicated okay well I haven't seen the doors yet so we'll get to that in a moment and then yeah and then it's a lot of exterior stuff so we're going to be building things in sections and painting as we go along uh, I'm really looking forward to this this is awesome Awesome! Right, okay, so we'll get these internal panels sorted. Mm -hmm. 
so for some strange reason when I was recording this footage the other day um, it didn't pick up my audio I'm not sure as to what happened it's a mistake on my part because I didn't check this particular bit of footage I think I must have just missed it um, when I was checking everything after recording uh, basically I was just going on about saying how the floor panels weren't fitting correctly and uh, there was a bit of warping uh, in the center piece which was causing problems for the other two pieces um, I used the heat gun a little bit a little brute force um, it was just, I was at the mo that point in time I was just trying to make sure that it all fit and where I needed to do some work um, to get it flush uh, but yeah it, it didn't pick up the audio so my apologies so uh, for the time being please enjoy the music and a quick time lapse Well, so that was a nightmare. Um, <laughs> as you can see from the time lapse, I resorted to the heat gun and then brute force and ignorance. Uh, <laughs> I have no real advice uh, for anyone who's going to build one of these things, uh, other than make sure you've got plenty of time to do it um, and you're currently having a good day when it comes to you know, sort of your mental health, uh, patience. Um, as well as or general how much you can deal with when it comes to frustrating kits um, <laughs> this thing it's been fun don't get me wrong it's been about five and a half hours four and a half hours five nearly five hours building time which is what I kind of expected to get where we are now and it's still like not the full interior um, I say it's not the full interior, it is the full interior because there's the left hand side, there's the right hand side, it literally just needs putting together but as I'm planning on painting the interior um, I want to be able to get at some of these angled details that once that panel's on you're not going to be able to get to. Um, so yeah I think the, the next thing from here is part two's video is going to be more or less building the outside of things, um, working on these honking great big lumps of resin um, and building, putting together like the, what I can only refer to it, I'm just going to refer to it as the command bridge, this this big chunk of armour that's at the back, there's the sponsons um, and some other little bits of detail. We do still have kicking around as well the uh, Iron Warriors brass stuff. Uh, so they're going to be plastered all over. I'm, I was planning on putting two on the inside as like a minor detail um, But looking at the space, I'm not 100% certain now, so we'll, we'll come to that when you know, Come to that at a later date So I guess that's that's pretty much everything for this video uh, Part two to come soon. There may be a paint video that runs alongside this specifically uh, uh, focusing on the interior um, but in the meantime I hope you've all enjoyed this I hope someone out there has learned something from this um, use your tools that you've got um, if possible get a heat gun these things are brilliant I'm really shocked that I haven't used one of these before I've just been like eh, hot water put it in boiling hot water with a rubber glove and, and, and just hope, to, hope that it, it moulds to the right way when I take it out and yeah but heat gun has been a lifesaver so thank you all for suggesting that uh, in the meantime stay safe everyone and uh, look after yourselves keep on hobbying and I will catch you next time <laughs>